Good, thanks for staying put. Right, next up, we are going to talk. Shh, 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 shh. Learn that at school. We're going to talk about this, uh, which is uh, one of many magnificent books that you can see at uh, the Rula Classic this year, but it's, uh, it's very special indeed. It's called The Wolf Pack. Who's aware of The Wolf Pack? You know, The Wolf Pack are Team Quick Step, as named by uh, Brian Home, their uh, charismatic DS. Uh, and now the name of this, uh, this fabulous book, 365 Days on the Road. And the man responsible for taking all of these photos that you're about to see on the screen here is Siegfried Eggers. <laughs> so Siegfried, I guess the best place to start is, how much were you into cycling before this? I'm a fan of cycling, but I'm not a cycling photographer. Yeah. I do fashion, I do publicity, but I'm not on a motorbike or whatever. I'm not in the races. No. So um, when the team asked me to do their portraits, they expected me to do something different. And who asked you, and how did it come about? You're Danish too, like, like Brian? No, I'm Flemish. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> The accents, at least I didn't say Dutch. Okay. <laughs> that, or German. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think, I think Mike has left the backstage area. Right? Um, I do apologize. But so, so how did it come about then? How did you get to, was it Brian who asked you? Did he know you? Because no. he's, quite, he's quite a fashion forward guy himself. Yeah, that's true. But I only met him in Calpe, the first training session. And I started beginning of December, taking yeah. pictures of the team during their... Um, physical tests yeah. in Leuven. Um, I did the team pictures 10 years ago. Just I met uh, the, the press officer of the team, had a talk about food and wine, and ended up talking about the pictures for the team. Yeah. And I did that 10 years ago. But the contact went. I expected them to call me to for the next year, and they expected me to say, I want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ten years later, they it asked happened. me, do you want to do it again? Because we want something different, and what do you suggest? And I suggested to take pictures during their physical tests, because then you don't have those shirts, the blue with all the logos and the shiny stuff. They are naked, and then you have... I, up, and then you can do portraits of the faces, and then you just see the faces. You have the clicker there. Should we, should we have a look at some? There you go. Hang on. So you said they're naked. What, what is he wearing on his face? He, this is during a test, so they are um, measuring the, the VO2 max. This is Yves Lampard, now Belgian champion. Yeah. And he, um, yeah, for me, it's more like the, the science behind it. And then you have a, a Top Gun feel. But I started out doing stuff like this, and then you have Stibar, yeah. really at the end. They have a protocol of 40, 45 minutes that they have to do in several steps. And this is really at the end, and you ask them, can you look into the camera, and they're like, <laughs> oh, where is he? They're just... They're, um, was, it, was it awkward? Was it uncomfortable trying to do that? I mean... Um, or, or were they just so focused? They are so focused. They weren't even aware that you were there. Well, this is a whole setup. This is in, in the center in Bacala in Leuven. So it's the bikes, everything, the, the equipment. It's like a hospital. Yeah. And it comes. That's the service course. Yeah. No, no, that's not. That's in Leuven. And service course is in um, where the bikes are and everything is in, right. in the Wevelgem. But this is really the center where they do the tests. So I have there my, all my flashlights, my backdrops, everything. So I create a studio in their center. And then you get stuff like this. Julian, you have a feeling like, here's Johnny, the, the, the shining. <laughs> Before the facial hair as yeah. well. So Before he was growing a beard. Yeah, yeah. It's but, remarkable. We've covered Rocky, Top Gun, The Shining. It's such a filmic. <laughs> that that, that was my idea of yeah. making them more like rock stars or movie stars than yeah. because they're so reachable. Yeah. Comparing to other sports like football or whatever, you can even ask them for an autograph. You can you can even walk into the hotel. 
when they are staying somewhere, try to do that with a, a player of Chelsea or whatever. You won't even get close to the hotel, no, no, I no. guess. And if you did, you wouldn't get a particularly intelligent answer either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. Hey, it's not Anfield, is it? Come on. Um, let, let me just ask, though. Do you, is it like that because it's cycling and cyclists? Or is there something specific about Quick Step and the whole Wolfpack ethos that, that Brian has brought to it that makes them a bit more, a bit more rock and roll, like you say? It's, it's a, a family thing. Yeah. You, you can see how everybody works together, how they are together at the table, um, in the hotels, in the car, working for each other. You've, they make you feel welcome. Even in you guys, um, I will show a picture later on in uh, Colombia, how it works. Maybe uh, this, is, um, this is during the recon in um, Flanders for yeah. the opening weekend. And for me, you have Tim de Klerk, they call him El Tractor. <laughs> yeah. And then at that moment, you have the sun coming out. And the Jacob's Ladder is coming down. I mean, it's a fantastic... It's, it's fa fantastic scenery, but I'm going to click through it. This is Colombia. This is a, the, the days before the, the race. They have a training camp on altitude. And it was so easy, just my hand out of the car, and then this gentleman stopped. The police, we had an escort of two motorbikes by the police. I just jumped in the back yeah. with a cycling helmet on. Uh, and then, <laughs> it's a very, very safe, very safe. Uh, as, as the sort of year progressed, and mm -hmm. you're, you know, we're getting into the springtime now, and the, the mm -hmm. week on in Flanders, were you becoming more comfortable, not just with the riders, but with the idea of being a cycling photographer as well? Yes, yes. Um, when you start with them, they, um, it feels a bit, I'm a fan, and a, really a quick step fan. I always watch the races with my father. And he was also the Mappé, and then later on the, the Quicks. So for me, it was more like a dream come true to, yeah. to be part of it, like a French little part. Sign, yeah, yeah. Effectively. And then, because of the pictures at um, the training sessions, the, um, the physical tests, they saw the pictures and they asked, would you like to do some more? Would you like to follow? And maybe the whole year, if we can do a book or an exhibition, what do you think? Mm. And before you know it, end of January, you're already in Colombia. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, that's early in the season, but uh, the team won 73 races mm -hmm. uh, this year. Uh, at what point was it apparent that it was going to be a, a good season? Could you tell? Was it as you got to the classics? Mm -hmm. the, the opening weekends, um, Omloop at Nieuwsblad, Kuren, Brussel, Kuren, they were nowhere. And the second evening, Kuren, after Kuren, there was a big discussion in the bus. Did they let you photograph it? Yep. <laughs> um, they, they, well, there were no restrictions for yeah. me. I could go everywhere. There was one restriction when they were in the shower, in the bus. <laughs> yeah. For me, that's logic. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that was the only restriction. But I, was in, I used little cameras. I don't use the big ones. I use little cameras that don't make any noise. So sometimes they don't even notice me when I'm around. So the big discussion starts between some of the top riders, and you weren't there. No, no. And there was like a big argument. They're blaming each other. They're blaming each other. It was okay. oh, a big discussion. And you're there in the corner taking your picture. And they're oh, <laughs> no, they're not going to see me. They're not going to see Did me. Did anyone blame you? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but at some points during the season, you enter the bus, somebody loses a sprint, becomes second, yeah. the worst place to end, and then you're, when they notice you at that moment, yeah. you better get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the other thing, and I, I noticed it very much um, at the tour of Britain, was some of the, the relationships there. You're right, Brian Home, it, it is a family, he's like a father figure, really. And he, he's, yeah. He embraces that. Mm. He, he's the leader of the pack. But the relationship in particular between Julian Alaphilippe and Bob Jungles mm. is very important. They are like brothers. Yeah. More than... Uh, you can't describe it. I will show a picture. I have a picture of them two together in their room, and it describes perfectly what you... you like a married couple more than 
brothers. <laughs> Almost. Almost. But, but without the discussions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess without the sex yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, an interesting uh, reason for the success this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't think it's uh, an exclusive. Uh, where are we here anyway? Moving on swiftly. Colombia. Colombia again. I'm in the back of the, the motorbike. Yeah. It starts to rain and the uh, the policeman doesn't know how to drive a bike. I'm in the back. So, he, yeah. so they're going ahead. And, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, they're, and they were like, oh, you can stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting back in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, what, what I noticed in this picture, you know, pr pros are, are, are want to do this, is that some of them keep the leg warmers and arm warmers on until it's sort of, you know, 25 Celsius mm -hmm. and blazing sunshine. Did you notice those little quirks between the different riders? When you're in the bus in the morning before the race, they, they are. What are you wearing? Do, do you, what, okay, do you have one, two, two layers? Okay, long sleeve, short sleeve, what kind of shirt, which trousers? <laughs> this, this all together, and then they have to make up their mind. Yeah, I thought you were going to say they, have, they put on makeup, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there was a thing with, um, I don't know if it's the right word, Vaseline? Yeah, Vaseline, yeah. They put it on their face for the cold. Yes. So when we entered um, the, um, at Cup, it was the first race with the spotlight. They were shining. It was like yeah. it, was, it was one glow. Yeah. Do, do the do the bigger personalities almost impose on the the newer guys, the younger guys, how how it's going to mm. be? What what is yeah, the best thing to wear? You, you see it with Wiggins. When Wiggins stopped wearing socks at the velodrome, all the young track riders would come in, and none of them were wearing socks because they'd seen Brad doing it. it, it is, is it's this similar. The case here? It's yeah. similar. No. Yeah. So who, who are the big who are the big guys? Who are the ones who are? You have like, different. Yeah, you have different type of guys. You have the the classics. Yeah. Then you have Gilbert. You have Nikki Terpstra. Yeah. Those two. Yeah. Then you go to the Ardennes. Then you have Bob and Julian. Yeah. And a bit Phil. Yeah. Again. Then you go to the Giro, and then you see Viviani. Yeah. But Viviani is so. Chilled. Chilled. Yeah. You don't even notice him. He's not the the big speaker at the table, he's always in the back, but little things that he does makes the team work for him. He expresses it in his mm -hmm. sprinting. And what about Gaviria as well? Because he, he had a great season. This is... This, there he is. This is uh, Hodge, yeah. new guy, first year in, uh, as a pro. This is Colombia, this is the team presentation. They're the last team to enter the stadium. And what does Fernando do? Alvaro, you go ahead. Take the moment. Take it. He, it's his home country, and you see the crowd, but this is only one. It goes round, and it's that packed with people. And Gavrilo says to Alvaro, go. What a gentleman. And, and then the next days, he goes full gas for him. For, for him. It works like that. Yeah. And it's it, that sort of team management, that relationship building is... But fine. nobody told Fernando to do this. No. Nobody. No. So that, that makes it... And when you see this happening before in the bus, because 10 minutes before we had the president of Colombia, Nobel Prize winner mm. for peace, in the bus wanted a picture with Fernando. Mm. Mm. And they just thought, can you take a picture for me? <laughs> it works like that. Yes, Mr. President, of course. Yeah. So I have a picture now at the desk. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what about Colombia itself, just before we, before we move on? It, it, it's an intriguing place. Like you say, it's been through a lot of changes recently. It's mm -hmm. much more peaceful now. Mm -hmm. Cycling is huge, but the, huge. the cycle scene there is not so... I mean, they don't have races organized like no, we do. No, not at all. They but have grand fondos, and mm -hmm. then they have big pros, and that's kind of it. Yeah, and, but then you have lots of people, a lot of women mm. cycling with bright colors. The, the jerseys over there, it's one pack of colors. Mm. You have uh, Uran with his own brand. Yeah. It's all color, color, color. Mm. And you, when the race is over there, they, it's packed with people behind, at streets, and it's, it's lots of people mm. coming to see the race. Very and it's, th it's th completely different to Flanders or to here in Britain or... Tour de France, mm. the scenery is different. Mm. You have policemen every few hundred meters mm. standing there, mm. especially in Cali, mm. was a bit weird. Yeah. That's why also that they have two policemen next to them when they are training. The whole time. When the whole training. time. Let's have a look at the next shot. 
There's so many to talk about. This is um, wow. Fernando with one of his horses. Is this at his home? Is this is his home, yes. This is the day before the national championship in Colombia. And I had um, a talk with um, Lombardi, the manager of Fernando, but also of Sagan. And I said, I want to take pictures of him with his horses. Is it possible? Yeah, of course. We'll take 20 minutes. Is that enough? So, yeah, that's enough. We are there, and I take my pictures, and after a while I say, I have enough, we can go. And I say, uh uh, I have three horses. This one was the first. We do the two other ones, and we stayed for two hours, yeah. taking pictures, riding the horse. That's it's a place. moment that you, that you realize that you can do something different than yeah. things in the races. Uh, and I suppose spending a whole year with them and photographing them, you find those sort of hidden, the hidden mm -hmm. side to them. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, who knew that he was a horse rider, that he owns horses? What other surprises did you, did you happen upon in the year? I wanted to go, I, I had a, a meeting, we scheduled after the Tour de France that I would go um, hunting with um, Philippe Gilbert. Hunting? Yeah, hunting. What, what kind of hunting? <laughs> Real hunting. Uh, shooting, yeah, okay. Yeah, but, uh, uh, what, what were you aiming at? Um, wild pigs and stuff like what, that. So like wild boar? Yeah, wild boar, yeah. Okay. But he crashes in the Tour de France, so yeah. that yeah, wasn't possible. No. Those kind of things. Also, the flight to Colombia was um, in the plane next to uh, Julian Alaphilippe, and he was just talking about his father, talking about his family. You have those long conversations that are great. Yeah. It's, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, really personal. It's another relationship. No. And when you're there in the bus, before the race, after the race, it's, it's different. It's really different. Uh, and the other thing you get, I suppose, on races and, uh, and with pro teams is they, they do exist in a bubble, and it's a really intense mm -hmm. experience. Is that how it felt to you? And now you're sort of out of the bubble mm -hmm. again. Do, do you miss it? A lot. Yeah. They asked me to do next season, and in the beginning I said no, it was too much. I have other clients as well, so I travel for those other clients. Almost never at home. Couldn't cycle myself. No, that's a Didn't see my wife, didn't see my daughter. And that's, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. But now... They're asking and you're, you're <laughs> I'm, sure I'm, I'm going I'm going in December to Calpe to do the, the official pictures. Yeah. Thinking about what I can do to make it different. Yeah. But I'm sure they'll lend you a bike. They've got plenty. I I have, a, I have my own bike and last year I took it with, and it's it's a different brand. And now those um, <laughs> those mechanics are you can come, but only if you bring your bike. It has to be uh, specialized. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And so that's it's going to be a hard should, one. They should give you one. You should ask uh, that question. I should ask. One. Okay. Or you'll be on the horse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the opening weekend. It's Dries like a horror film. It looks, yeah. it looks like he's scared of something. Yeah. The Dries Devenens, it's. Uh, I was on the muur in Gerardsberg, and I see everybody passing by, and he's in the back, and I say... So this is Tour of Flanders? Yeah, no, no, this is uh, Omloop at Nieuwsblad. Omloop, first race. okay, Omloop, okay. And he's, he's looking around, and said, Dries, come on, come on. He said, where's the car? I said, why, go on. He lost his lens, and he has minus or plus four. Yeah. And he, he had, had no death. He couldn't see a thing. He had a huge headache. Yeah. He even stumbled to the car, and then I ran with him. He went into the car and tried to watch the race. And it's just him trying to, to look at the screen, but with one lens was difficult. Yes. And it seems like he went through hard times, but he, he just can't see. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's seen a ghost, doesn't yeah. it? Wow. That's, I mean, that's a striking shot. Mm -hmm. And then you have the light coming in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Strade Bianche. Yeah. Stibar. I took pictures of them before the race, and I, I knew they would look like this. And I said, we're going to do before and an after. Yeah. And he looks happy. He looks fairly relaxed. He's, yeah. He's a, he's a proper hard man, Stenek Stibar, he, he's, as well, from his cyclocross yeah, he's, uh, early years. He's a tough guy, but he's also a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He's really gentle and friendly to everybody in the team. We are, this is after the, the finish line. And I thought he knew where the bus was. 
So I just followed him <laughs> running around through, <laughs> through Siena. We started off with Peter Sagan, Valverde, and Zdenek. A few meters after, Sagan stops to give some autographs yeah. and do some pictures. And we are with Valverde and uh, Stibar, and they go into an alley. That's a dead end. And they come back, and he's smiling like, oh, we can't <laughs> find the bus. Valverde is with a face <laughs> like this. <laughs> Valverde turns the other way, and he, he, Stibar follows me. Yeah. I follow him. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes down, and he, he, he stops in the... Do you know where the bus is? I have no clue. I f so, and he's just smiling, looking, and then you have that scenery. Yeah. Did it's you just find the a, bus in the end? Yeah. Uh, he was already showered when I was at the bus. What, what strikes me about that picture as well is he's, he's racing on disc brakes, as many of them are. And I mm. remember speaking to him a couple of years ago, actually, and they were first allowed to race on the road mm. on disc brakes. And he was one of the first at Quick Step to give it a go. Mm. And I spoke to him at the start of the stage. It was in. Uh, it was in uh, Norwich, near Norwich, and it finished in Ipswich. And he, I said, okay, you know, talk about the disc brakes. Oh, well, you know, give it a go. Got to the end of Ipswich. What do you think about the disc brakes? Oh, I hated them. Awful. Awful. Hated the disc brakes. Did you get any complaints from the riders? Did, were they sort of a bit honest about what Here they were in the Strade, he, um, he started off with a normal bike, yeah. normal brakes. Yeah, and the brakes. last 80 Ks, he switched. So you see them adopting this kind yeah. of, these kind of changes? Um, but during the Bing Bang tour, it was August, I guess. Yeah. They all went on disc brakes, and they had issues with their... There was one section with cobblestones. Yes. And then when you start off with that bike, there's little bubbles of air going through, and then it all comes together, yeah. and they, they have no brakes. <laughs> there was all hands on in the car because in the next 10, 20 minutes of the race, everybody had to change. So you had Tom Stills and the mechanic <laughs> sweating their ass off, running, with, pushing those guys, next yeah. bike, up, next and bike. And you're photographing the whole time, thinking this is golden. Yeah, but you just have two older people trying to get them in the race. Oh, so <laughs> so, so would, you, would you put the camera down and help out? During the Strade, they, they stickered my car because, oh, we have no, some stickers, so you can go into the race. Do you mind taking some wheels? And which sections are you going to do? <laughs> and then I'm there with my cameras, with the <laughs> wheels next to me, hoping they don't have a flat tire, because then you have to decide, helping or taking pictures. Yeah. Uh, did, did you help at any point? Did you have to do that no, mechanics no, job? No, 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 no. Happy. Yeah. Really happy. Yeah, yeah, what a relief. <laughs> what a relief. Okay. Again, Stibar, Tour of Flanders. You have Nikki doing his flash interview, and already Stewart watching the flash interview. And was uh, he was he emotional watching? Yeah, they, watching they were Terpstra. all emotional. Yeah. You have some pictures in the book where you see the mechanics hugging each other, crying, because Does it means so much. It means so much, especially for a team like Quickstep. Yeah. Tour of Flanders is the race to. I mean, what. Was there any tension there? Because, you know, you, Terpstra has his detractors in the pro peloton because he can be quite a tricky customer. Okay, I'm putting it, I'm putting it mildly there. Yeah. You know, some people when you're in the stand team, him. When you're in the team with him, yeah. he's the best you can have. Yeah. When you're in another team, yeah. I guess he's a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that kind of tension on the road? I mean, particularly in this race, uh, because he was... He was heavily invested in, uh, in racing and attacking mm. ride that day. I was at, uh, at the Quaremont that time, and I saw him pass by the second time, and I thought, he's going to stop. He didn't look good. He was in the back. Next, the last one, he's in the front alone. You're like, how does he do it? He's so, he can give you the, the idea that he's lousy that day, and an hour later, he's just, racing full gas. He, he plays also with, with the riders and the team. Yeah. But everybody's a bit sad that, they, that he's leaving. Yeah, yeah. Especially those young guys. They're like... Mm. They look up to him. Yeah. Mm. I think we've got time to talk about a couple more photos. It's important to say that you can see them all in the book. Mm. There's a reason for doing this. Um, but it's, it is brilliant to hear you talk about them in Siegfried. So let's, let's just talk about a couple more. This uh, is just you roughly. You said you weren't in the showers. What's going on here? This is a uh, Phil in the showers in Roubaix after the stage. Has to be right. He asked me to to come. 
He said, I want to do it once, shower there. And then when you have that picture and the other guys see it, they were like, why didn't I go? Stibar, all those guys, yeah. they asked me for next year if I can go to the showers with them. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, go back, go back, because I, I think I just noticed. So is, is that a tattoo? That's a it's tattoo. It's the World Champion Stripes mm. tattoo on, on Gilbert's ankle. I hadn't seen that before. That's a little detail. Yeah, it's good. And it's, it's held up well. It's a little while since he was world champion. And when he entered, he was looking for the... They all have their names on it. Yeah. He was looking for you on Museo's... Uh, he wanted to he go in, in the Museo's really shower. Really specific, that one. So, so the Lion of Flanders mm -hmm. is a big influence over a lot of the riders. Mm -hmm. yep. Especially if they're Belgian themselves, of course. Okay, let's finish on the next one because... I think it's, it's apt that we fi finish uh, with Julian Alaphilippe. Would you say he's been the rider of the season for, for Quick Step? I think so. Yeah. Winning so many races, doing the, the Tour de France so well. Yeah. And even yeah. bigger than that, the Tour of Britain, which he won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Tour de France, is France, is it called? Yeah. No, 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 not aware of that. Um, uh, and other races as well. Now, he's interesting, isn't he? And it's a, it's a great point to finish in that he represents the new breed, I guess, of cyclists. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it with Sagan. And they can do a wider range of things mm -hmm. than, than, than previously thought. He can climb with the best climbers. He can sprint amongst the sprinters mm -hmm. if it's an uphill finish. And he's got a good punch. Yeah. And he's a nice guy. He's, oh, he's lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's one of the guys I would really miss if I stop taking pictures of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's so open. He's, he wants to please everybody in the team. He, he goes to mechanics, are you okay? Do, do, you need, do you need something to drink? I can go and get it for you. Do you need a beer? And then he takes one for himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, yeah, he's the best. And I think, again, just, just to finish a, a last thought on this, is that he embraces the fun side of it. And I think, you know, of course, other teams exist in this sport and they're looking at doing things that are slightly different mm -hmm. next season and racing different kinds of races. To finish off, is that the overriding sense you get from spending a whole season with Quick Step in that more than anything, they embrace the, the enjoyment, the fun of racing their bikes? When you're in the bus before the race, the music goes up louder, louder, louder. They start to dance in the bus, having fun together just before the race they, 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 and then the, you see them at the start they're just like yeah let's go and, then, yeah. and that's the way they, they race but beginning of the season was different with uh, the big argument but then it, w when it went good the, they started to win and, and again and again and again and it felt like a big game yeah for them but they won it yeah ladies and gentlemen you can see you can see the Wolfpack, all these pictures and more uh, here at uh, the Ruler Classic. I think you can buy a copy as well. Are you, are you thinking you're going to sign some, potentially? Oh. Yeah, yeah um, after this, I'm going down to the shop, you and are, if you want. You are. Go and see Siegfried. It's brilliant to hear you talk about it. What an amazing season, and what fantastic photos. Siegfried Eggers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a little bit of a change of direction uh, in, a, in a moment, so stick around because uh, our next se uh, session focuses on cycle safety. We're going to be hearing from uh, Cycling UK's Duncan Dollimore and also former national champion and all-round good guy, Adam Blythe. So stick around, they'll be on with me very shortly.